Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas to one and all. Ho, ho. I can't believe it. I'm at G&G Music down in Antigonish. Ho, ho, ho. And Ginger's Bird is here tonight with JP. I can't believe it. You know what? I can't wait till he plays some of those bush egg guitars. Oh, I'm so excited. We'll see you a little bit later. Ho, 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 ho. Welcome one and all to Wednesday night, our favorite night of the week. Uh, string Theory, live at GNG Music in Antigonish, Nova Scotia with our wonderful host, Glenn Gotell. And we love doing this. This is our, our Christmas special here. And uh, Glenn's been our partner in this program since the very first night we did it. And uh, between him and our good friends at Boucher Guitar, God bless you, Robin, Guillaume, Julian, Diane, all the crew there, and our other great partner guitar builders like Yeri, Yamaha, Gallagher, uh, Levy Straps. Let's not forget Levy's is a major sponsor now. Thank you, Levy's, that make all our great string th str thing blah, 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 string theory straps. That's hard to say. K and K Sound as well. Our friends out in Oregon who make the best pickups in the world, and yeah. So this is fantastic. We're here for Christmas. This is our Christmas night with Glenn. And there are some tremendous instruments in this room right now. Glenn has one of the largest selections of Boucher in the province. Uh, our friends in Halifax at Fantasy Music already also have three or four down there. And it's the only place you can see them. So if you, if you want to come to the number one Boucher dealer in the world, it's Glenn, it's Glenn Gotell. So it's, that's pretty impressive. Um, and he just got, what, eight in now? And that's, this is one of them. This is a, this is a master grade uh, SG-52. Uh, and Studio Goose, of course. It's got a beautiful Adirondack top on it, herringbone trim, rosewood back and sides, bound in maple. The typical Robin Boucher masterpiece. And uh, I was just playing it there. And it's, it's so much like my, my boo-boo. <laughs> Licks come with it, folks, if you buy it today. Anyhow, so yes, and what does it do? Uh, oh, it's got a K and K, it's got a K and K installed in it already. Way to go, boys in Quebec. And uh, yeah, so this is just one example. I love doing this because the only time I get to do to see these instruments before they go to forever homes is when I come to Glenn's or, or Fantasy. And uh, it's an awful thrill to see these before they're owned by someone. And I'm sure somebody will own these quite quickly. Glenn's already sold two of the shipment he got in. <laughs> and and uh, took a custom order today as well. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty exciting. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. I'll, I'll take a few questions first, and uh, then we'll talk about uh, some of the things that are going on in the shop here, which is just always filled with such great gear. Everything from fiddles to banjos to drums to recording equipment and all the all the stuff you need if you're a picker or a player of any kind and uh, we love Glenn. Glenn's been good to us and uh, and good to everybody that comes in here and there, there's a reason he's got so much business and that's that's why cause he's a great guy and right away we've got a, a super chat uh, I gotta find him where'd he go? Ted Whitmore yay is that the question? <laughs> Well, thank you, Ted, for the <laughs> Ted Whitmore. I don't know. That's it. You must be new, I think. Maybe. I don't think I've seen him before. Okay. Well, Ted, thank you very much for that. We really appreciate it. And uh, okay, we get the normal crew in here. Uh, I had seen a question. I'm just going to just zip down through here and see. There was a couple of good questions. Uh, I feel like I'm at the United Nations. Larry Rindris, Yeah. 
Uh, T-Bone, you took my advice and bought a Fishman Loud Box. Smart man. Uh, and a, a lot of questions about that all the time about, um, and I'm sure you hear it too, Glenn, about what to, and he has one sitting right there, and it's for sale. Um, and it's, uh, that is the Fishman Loud Box uh, Mini, right? Or the, yeah. So that's the one size sort of below the one that I use, but it's still an incredible amp. And uh, it's, it's, wire, it's wireless too, it's p battery powered, right? Yeah, Bluetooth and battery powered. Um, I use the model right above that one, the artist is called, and I get this question continually. Like, I got, so I got my Boucher and I got my K&K &K or I got my Yeri or my Yamaha or all, whatever they're, they've run out, Recording King, we forgot to talk about those guys too. Um, what amp do I use? And I've been ans ans answering a lot of questions about that actually this week. And I always send everybody to Fishman because uh, there are other types of amplifiers, of course, and some of them are just incredibly expensive. Uh, you know, the the AERs and Schertlers and uh, the Godans and all kinds of different companies that make uh, you know specifically acoustic amps uh, for a lot of money, but they just somehow don't ever seem to reach the 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 penetration and the clear, clean volume that a Fishman, a Fishman does. I'm not a huge fan of Fishman pickups, but the amplifiers are deadly, and I've used them for 15 years. I've had one on the stage with me since uh, prior to 2009, I think, is when I first started using them. So, uh, yeah, so that's good. You want a Super Jet 500 on there? Okay, yes, I see that. Um, Super chat from Ian Rossiter. Any chance of hearing some chat on the Gretsch behind you? Uh, well, if we had an electric amp around. Really? Yep. Oh, well, let's try that then. Seems it's your lucky day. So, yeah. That, that's a, now tell the story, Glenn, about where you got all these instruments, because this is fascinating. Well, there's a chap from the Yukon that was watching the, uh, the JP uh, channel about a month ago, and uh, he was so impressed, he said, uh, it looked like you got a shop down there, and he said, can I send you everything that I own? Because down in the Yukon, he had a hard time selling it. He wasn't playing anymore. So he shipped me two crates, six by six, out of, he did up plywood and shipped me everything he owned from 10 guitars, banjos, and everything to sell for him. Unreal. And they're all they're all just like new, so yeah. some pretty amazing instruments. Yeah, uh, there's a whole, yeah, there's an entire collection from this one guy who, who came across Glenn because of us, because of String Theory, and... And uh, that's really cool. I like to see that sort of thing. Um, I haven't, I haven't checked this guitar out, but I'm sure she's in fine, sh fine condition. It's hard to put a Gretsch down. They're tough as nails. There we go. that middle pickup. There's always been some discussion about any reverb on that thing over there? There's always been some discussion as to whether Chet used a wound G or an unwound G. And this, this Gretsch has a wound G on it. I'm not sure he used, I don't know if he did or not. Let's make her really fat.
I wasn't ready. <laughs> There's your Gritch. Good stuff. That's a great guitar, yeah. Glenn. It shouldn't be hard to get rid of that one. That's around a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's worth every penny. It's classic, classic Gritch. It's a, a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that is a. That's, I think this is an American Gritch. Uh, it could be because it doesn't say. It doesn't say uh, China or Indonesia. This could be an American. It's really heavy. Which is which indicates it's, oh no this is this is Korean, but it's the good ones. They made a when they moved the they moved production of these guitars overseas many many years ago, and uh, somehow they kept the quality up like really high. There's nothing wrong with them at all. That was a lot of fun. Jesus, I haven't I haven't done that in forever. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the drawing board here. And see what we got. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Oh my God. There's so much stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Michael Easters wants to discuss the string theory bingo ideas, <laughs> <coughs> which is basically a list of phrases that I say a lot. And when I say them during the broadcast, you're supposed to take a drink. So. No, we, well, this was, I don't know if we told you about this last week. Oh, I saw the list. I got a message from. Yeah, we were discussing making an actual bingo card. Oh my God. And then when you say them, you, you put a dauber on your. All right, your right, right. And then you can like get four corners and you win a prize or something. I don't know. Okay, so the Jimmy James Project has a good question. Is there is there any guitar or tone wood that you prefer? Um, mahogany. Uh, I prefer mahogany. I just vote over everything. And then, of course, the second in line is rosewood, and uh, uh, that's just that's that's natural. I, I think a lot of people switch back and forth in that world. Like I was, I don't know about you, Glenn. But you've you've experienced a lot of, with this stuff too. But I've never been a fan of uh, of Brazilian rosewood. I just not. It's too expensive, and it. All the Brazilian rosewood guitars I've ever seen were cracked and damaged. Like it's not a, it's not a very hardy wood, I don't think. And uh, it's, uh, but the best guitars in the world seem to be built out of it. You know, all those. You know, you look at guitars that you'll see in Gruens or Madeline Brothers. You know, and there'll be a Martin from the '50s or whatever, and it's built out of Brazilian and it's worth $120,000, right? It doesn't seem to make much sense to me when. Really, you know, you get a good mahogany gu guitar or a good bubinga like Robin uses or Sapelli now he's using or Coca Bolo, which he's built for me. And there's mahogany right there. Like, I'll get there's a good let's let's just take a look at that for a second because this is uh, this is just a killer version of you know what what that's bubinga, but it's a mahogany, I think it's a mahogany species, right? It's a tight, it's a it's the same same general species, but my OM Boucher is built out of Bubinga, and man, the tone of these things. This is this is an, this is an SG twenty two G, uh, torrified Adirondack top, uh, Bubinga sides, back maple bound, mahogany neck. Um, it's just huge and warm, right? It's completely different than that rosewood one. It's it's just fatter and warmer somehow. If I was picking between the two, I would take this one. Whoa, whoa! It's just unbelievable.
It'll just go and go and go and go. Now, part of that's Robin, right? Robin's construction is you get that kind of sustain and power from his construction, but still the difference between this and Rosewood is it's night and day really for me, right? And and then again, then you go to maple, which is a real brittle hard wood that has a lot of bright. It can be warm and fat and sort of dead in the middle and super nice uh, top end. And also a desirable sound. I like maple guitars as well. But my favorite thing is, is, is that type of wood. Bubinga, mahogany, then rosewoods, and then maple. And then, depending on the builder, all of the, you know, really exotic woods like Sapelli and Cocobolo and there's so much of it around now, right? Then you've got the different breed, the different species of maple and mahogany, whether it's flame maple or bird's eye or, yeah. So, I mean, it's, I think the, the, the wood that, that I go for is the one that sounds the fattest and the warmest and the loudest, sort of, that's my criteria. Uh, let's see now. Also, Jimmy wanted to know about 80, 20 strings over phosphor bronze strings, and it's always phosphor bronze. Uh, and I think uh, I've answered this question before about clear tone. I've, you, I've tried clear tone. Um, they are, eh, they're not elixirs. That's all I can say about it. Uh, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, oh. Um, so Caper Away wants to know how my experience, oh, there's a, nope, that's not one. Uh, Caper Away wants to know if I've, uh, if I've, uh, if my Recording King uh, Dirty 30s parlor has stood the test of time, and the answer is yes. Uh, I still love it. I actually don't have it anymore. Dave Gunning bought it from me because he loved it so much he had to have it. And he literally just w reached out and put $150 in my hand one night and said, I don't need a guitar. Give it to me. And it, he's recording with it. And so I have another one. I bought a, I actually bought one from Fantasy uh, while I was in there one day. And it's orange. It's creamsicle. And it's, I, love the, I love it. It's, it's, it's an amazing little guitar. And they, uh, have, do you have one here? Uh, not that no. One, but I do have an old one. It, it had the little parlors, yeah. They're just really cool little guitar for the money. Incredible quality, and they and they are staying together. Like, in, and we're going into the sort of the dead of winter right now, where the humidity is kind of messed up, and it's getting colder, and humidity is fluctuating. And no, none of my guitars are are having any problems. It's even the recording kings. Like, I just had my Century Thirty Three out yesterday and was playing it. It just it didn't fit the fit the project I was going to use it for. Uh, so I ended up not playing it for the show, but I was uh, still amazed by, you know, pulling it out of the case, haven't, haven't had it out for weeks. Plays like a dream, still in tune, you know? And that's a laminate guitar, right? So, yeah, laminate, laminate, I don't have anything against laminates at all, if they're well built. If they're not, well then you're, you know, you're in trouble. But if you get a decent uh, laminate guitar, they can sound just as good as something twice the price, you know? So, uh, my brother Joe says, Merry Christmas, Glenn. Right on, Joe. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, Lori. You can just stick a set there further down. I don't see it. It's not, on, it's not on here yet. Oh, there's a, yeah, there's Jeff. Uh, it's Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff Galant's got a super chat up, chat up. He says, Glenn, okay with you giving that Santa behind you a solid punch in the face? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think we're not going to be able to do that, Jeff. Uh, sorry, buddy. Um, let's see now. There was something else here. Uh, uh, Laura, Carol Dunfield has a sh question about uh, the Marty party with the Sullivans. Um, I don't. Uh, there's a question. She wants to know if there, if I remember what song I was doing on that TV show, and wh and I don't remember. It's been many years. Uh, a lot of that stuff I don't remember. <laughs> it was so long ago, and there was so much of it that 
uh, yeah, it was hard to, uh, it was hard to keep track of all that. Uh, Eli Patrick Bluegrass wants to know of all the guitars I currently own, which is my favorite and why. And, uh, I can basically say the same thing I always say. My favorite guitars are my Boucher's and, uh, I can't actually pick one of them. Uh, I have a signature model, um, my J.P. Cormier signature model, which is a triple O cutaway, uh, you know, well, you've seen, you've sold them, Glenn. And, uh, it's, it's the best guitar I've ever played in my life, ever, of anything I've ever had my hands on. And uh, so I, I almost don't count that guitar because it's not fair. It's not fair to any other guitar, right? So it's, but, but if you take that out of the equation, it's still all Boucher's. My, I have OMs, I have Parlor, I have Triple O, I have Dreadnought. If I, if I need to do something really incredibly important, that's the guitar I'm reaching for, and uh, it's 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 still my favorite guitar, uh, and guitar he's my still my favorite builder. I also love my my handmade Yamahas. There's there's something about the red labels and the L the high end L series guitars that, as I've said in my reviews of these instruments, they're very much like Robins. They they come from the same they come from the same discipline, the same type of shop, and the same number of of employee luthiers and students and so, and the same thing with Yeri when, when I when I've when I've got these master grade uh, Alvarez Yeri that come from the custom shop in Kani Japan it's like it's like holding a Boucher it's you can tell that these guys are doing exactly the same thing as Robin does and uh, so I have this just just a there's just a, a wide pantheon of of builders I'm dealing with right now that just blow my mind, and uh, there's a there's another one coming. As I've said, it was it was supposed to be here sooner, but there may be some delay in its in its completion. Uh, another luthier out of Ireland, uh, James Martin Guitars, is is building us a guitar for review, and uh, I can't wait to see that because he's a super small shop, one guy, right? And uh, so. You know, Robin Boucher would tell you himself, as I've had these conversations with him many times, it's like uh, there's so many builders in the world right now. There's hundreds of them that build this quality, and they're all completely different. And, and if, you, if you find one that you love, you know, go to it and stay with it. And... But I always recommend these because I've never seen, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone buying a Boucher and taking it back. It just doesn't happen. And, and I've seen dozens of these guitars go out the door sight unseen. And the person gets it and they're just like, what is going on? Like they can't even believe it. Like I, just recently a buddy of mine, I helped him, uh, his name is Clay Jones. If you're a bluegrass player, you'll know Clay. He's one of the most famous flat pickers in the world. And uh, he's been with some major bluegrass bands, Mountain Heart, and he's played with everybody. And uh, I just helped him get a Boucher. He didn't have a guitar that he liked, and he was he had retired for a while, and he was he was depressed about it. And he heard my Boucher, and he said, "I've got to get one of these things." And uh, so he is now playing one. And he's one of the he's one of the top American flat pickers, right? And uh, he, he drove all the way from North Carolina all the way down to Florida to buy this guitar. And uh, when he, he got it, he just he, he cried. He was standing in the sh guy's shop playing with the tears going down. See, so he, so he knew how good they were, but he, there he finally owned one, right? And this is an old hardened road guy, right? Like, and, he, and he gets his hands on a Boucher and it just blows his face off. So that can happen with any guitar right that you that that's the beauty of guitars they're all very subjective right so uh any chance of this from chat to joe uh he 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 let's see um uh three kind of starting to look like jim hennessy says i'm starting to look like burl lives and uh yeah you can kiss my arse jim hennessy and uh <laughs> <laughs> I, Cam's here. Oh, Cam's here. Okay, good, good. Uh, T Bone, oh, T Bone, uh, got ordered the K and K pickup today. Sweet. 
Okay, so Derek Mosier has got an interesting question. Uh, he says, I haven't played the violin for almost 40 years, and I may buy one this winter. Any advice on buying a new or used for anything under $500? Uh, Glenn has a number of really nice fiddles. We were just looking at these, and I'm sure there's something here that you could get for under 500 bucks, right? Yeah, so I would check here. There's one laying right there, actually, that I was just playing with. Um, right there in the blue. I think that's, that's one of them, isn't it, Glenn? Yeah. Like, there's some really nice fiddles in this shop. Um, Glenn always has stuff here. And, uh, yeah, even even things like uh, that one there that's uh, quite a bit more expensive than that. But but there's definitely violins here. So, um, Derek, maybe, maybe I might even be able to... I wonder if I should... Uh, before we leave tonight, uh, Derek... Let me know if you want me to try one of these things out and pick one for you, and then Glenn could ship it to you. All right? Uh, okay, so uh, Herschel Rector. Oh, the, he's in Mississippi. I didn't know that, Herschel. That's awesome. Uh, he says, we have no terrific shop like G&G &G to visit here in South Mississippi, our loss. So thanks, Herschel. But Glenn can ship to you. Glenn ships all over the world. So if you ever see anything here you want, that Glenn can get, it can be on your doorstep in a matter of days. Um, Cam sent the super chat. Did it come through? Uh, there it is. Cam McMaster, thank you, sir. I'm playing, being interviewed on a live stream Friday night. Should I wear my Hunter's Orange Lick a Chick hat? Yes. And I would try to have a small bucket of the actual chicken there at hand so that you can, so that you can like eat it like and have some falling down your chin while you're doing the interview because it just, that's what I would do. So, yes, I would definitely get the bucket of chicken and get the whole, the, the hat, the, the whole deal. Find a t-shirt, too, if you can. So you'd just be totally lick a chick. Day glow orange or hunter's orange or whatever you can get. That's, that's just my advice. Uh, so, um, eh. Shane Arsenault says G and G Music is the best shop in the province. Thank you, Shane. Uh, we've got stuff. Glenn. <laughs> Jeff Glant says you probably charge more for that amplifier now that I played through it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um, okay, let's do another guitar. Uh, we're falling behind. Let's take a look at the Lakewoods. Another one that I always forget to mention. Lakewood. The Lakewood. Lakewood is a company that brought me and Glenn together like, t like 20 years ago. And uh, a, a company out of Germany that he discovered and took the dealership over uh, here in Antigonish and became like the number one Lakewood dealer in North America and still is to this day. And if you've ever seen Matt Anderson, you've seen one of these guitars because Matt saw me playing them, you know, 15 years ago and started playing them himself and he's stuck with them ever since. They are a very... Um, hardy guitar. They're sturdily made. Uh, they're well built. Uh, this is an M32, right? Or D32, right. And uh, they're just a real solid, solid guitar. Martin type solid guitar. And uh, I used them for quite a while. Um, nice bottom. They have what I call a European tone. They don't, uh, European builders don't sound like us. This, and it's interesting, as I had a long conversation with Chris Meikle at Yeri, and we discussed why the, the Japanese luthiers don't sound like Western guitars. And, and the further west you go, the, the more bottom end gets added to the instruments till you get to America and you're playing like D28s that are just these giant bottom end cannons. And Lakewood is like that. Lakewood's a very European sounding, it had a tone like like Firk and Stonebridge. And they got a very unique uh, uh, tonal structure, right? The, the, the color that they put out is not like anything else. <laughs> And these 
are on special, aren't they? They sure are, yeah. Yeah, so what's this one going for, Glenn? That one there, regular 45, it's going for 35. Yeah, so $1,000 off of this guitar. And it's the one that Matt plays right behind you, too. That's the jumbo. Yep. Uh, there's good money off of that, too. Just for, just for this week. Um, right. I've only got two of them left. And there's about a thousand bucks off those guitars. <coughs> That's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, there's about a thousand dollars off of these two guitars, each each of them, and uh, those are nice. That's a nice kind of that's a nice example of uh, of the two body sizes from the from that company. They're really really pretty. They sound good. Um, let's see here. Uh, There's a question. A super chat. Does Glenn have a mouth harp, and how much is printed off? Well, I was, uh, you mean just a regular harmonica? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's got tons of them here. And he, yeah, you can ship it to PEI for nothing. Go for a dollar or something. Put that in an envelope. <laughs> One of those plastic envelopes. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, the boys are on fire tonight on here. Okay. Uh, he says, not a harmonica, a milk harp. Like one of those plucky things? Oh, you mean a Jew's harp. Blum, 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 blum. Do we have one of those? Uh, you have had those, and I've seen them in here. Yeah. We can too find... Too many people breaking their teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're hard, in the, they're hard in the dentures. Uh, But you could you could get oh, one. Yeah, yeah you can get one. I usually have them in I've here. actually seen them in here, yeah. He doesn't have one right now, Jeff, but he can get one for you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, just trying to see what happens. Uh, they call it a. They used to call it a Jew's harp, but it's a jaw harp that's as what well. They call it the same one. Yeah, well, that's too bad. That's what it's called. It's, if you just look up music history, it was a Jew's harp, and uh, or they, they, of course, they, that got turned into juice harp, and then jaw harp. And I don't. Doc Watson calls it something else. He's re, he was really good at it. He could play melodies on them that were just unbelievable. Uh, let's see, I'm just trying to go back through here and see. Who I missed. Uh, Chris Walton wants to know if I consider reviewing a Yeri WY1. Um, actu actually, uh, there's one coming, so wait for that. Uh, I have a w yes, uh, we've talked about that guitar, Glenn, the WY1TS. Yeah. The WY1 is uh, Joe Bonamassa plays them. They're considered Yeri considers them the, their their stage guitars, right? Because they're a little bit more blingy than their normal Master Series, which they try to keep pretty sedate. But yes, there's one coming to the channel, so uh, stand by. Uh, I think jo <laughs> Big John should play that ukulele on the wall, and that's not going to happen, Jeff. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Jeff, I would also like to see Big John punch the Santa. <laughs> There's a lot and, of discussion uh, about punching Santa. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, God. You guys are nuts. Um, Jesus. This goes a lot faster when Ginger reads the question. Um, that's an interesting question. Did I ever get to play the Clarence White Telecaster when my, with my, during my time with Marty? And the answer is no. I, I held it. I had it in my hands, but I never got to play it. Uh, I did play, however, uh, the, the D45 Martin that was built for Johnny Cash that Martin, that uh, Marty owned. I, I played that guitar a lot. And it was a beast. It was from the 60s. And uh, you knew it because it had, a, it had a square piece of abalone inlaid in the bottom uh, quadrant of the front of the guitar that just said Cash. That was the only uh, customization he had on the guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I played that guitar a bunch. Uh, that guitar was always around because Marty always had it. It was his favorite one. And the Clarence White Telecaster, yeah, I had it in my hands. That was a, that was a, all I can say. I never I never even played a chord on it. Um, uh, e, e. That's an interesting question too. The Happy Knot wants to know if I was to buy one bass, would an Ernie Ball Stingray be a good choice, or maybe a Fender? Um, I play all kinds of bass. My bass of preference is Warwick. I play an electric Warwick four string, and I also have, uh, which was also a gift from Robin Boucher, bought 
a bass one night at a at a <laughs> at a at a, at a Boucher workshop because I had mentioned I liked it, and uh, <coughs> he was so pleased with how the, cl the how the clinics had gone, he wanted to get me a present and he bought me this Warwick Alien acoustic bass. So I have sort of the two, I have the electric and the acoustic sister of the same bass and. Uh, before that, I always used Fenders, uh, but also one of my favorite bass players of all time that's ever worked with me, Emily Dingwall, uses a Stingray. They're great, aren't they, Glenn? Ernie Ball's, the Stingray basses, they're unbelievable. So I would almost lean towards the Ernie Ball rather than the Fender, I think. Uh, you can use, Warwick is good, except they are, I think, are quite heavy compared to fenders and, and stingrays. So yeah, you, you've got an easy, uh, you've got an easy ch choice there because they're all really good. So good, good luck with your choice. Uh, Charles from Georgia says he enjoyed my performance at the symphony. That's great, man. Thanks for watching from all the way down there. Um, I used to do a lot of playing in Georgia. Uh, Jesus. Things are really, the, the boys are getting censored left and right here. Um, uh, and that's sort of a, we sort of stalled there. Terry Short just said he purchased my signature model. And he says it's an amazing piece of art. And you are correct about that, Terry. Um, and he said, "What my question is, what strings do you prefer? And I use light gauge phosphor bronze elixirs on every guitar. Um, as I've probably talked about a million times before during this program, um, the, uh, I switched from mediums to lights about 10, 12 years ago and never really looked back. So, yeah. Let's I saw a question from Joe go by, but you might have missed. Yeah, there's a lot of... <laughs> There's a lot of stuff. Oh, ooh. Here's another Bubinga, Bubinga Darling. Now this is much like my very first Boucher OM, except it's got a torrified top. And uh, you might be interested to know that uh, Robin was the first one to ever torrify Adirondack. Uh, it's such a valuable wood that nobody wanted to torrify it because it was too dangerous. You'd often destroy tops. So Robin really got a great process together, and uh, his torrified Adirondack is unsurpassed anywhere in the world by any builder, and especially for 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 sound. I want you to remember this is an OM body. It's almost louder than the dread. Okay, I'm having to yell over it. It's almost louder than the dreadnoughts. Good God. This thing is friggin' ridiculous. This is ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. That is the loudest, that's, uh, that is the loudest small body guitar I've ever played. I keep saying that every time I try these things. It doesn't seem possible. What's the name of that tune? The Boucher just kicked my ass real? I, I don't know, <laughs> that's what we're gonna call it. Uh, and this is like one of his kind of low-end model, like this, this, 
the simple Bubinga, it's got the nice torified, that's an extra thing, for sort of a gold pack thing. Uh, master grade top, you know, but holy shit. It's unbelievable. How much does this, what's this one go? 46 or 47, like. That's loaded with pickup. It's got K and K on board already. And is there any special on these now, right before Christmas? Yeah, there sure is. There's a free pickup with 450 bucks or 400 dollars. That's yep. uh, that comes in free. Or yeah, uh, yep. Boucher strap. Yep. So that so that you're gonna get a, you could get you can get a free Boucher strap with this, and they're gorgeous. They're made by Levy's as well. Yeah, they sure are, yeah. And uh, the K and K is is gonna be free in this thing, and uh, just. I don't even know. Like I don't even know. I just there's just no point, right? You can play any guitar and just after you pick up that, it's a little pointless. Uh, let's see what else is here. Oh, you know what we should do? Want to look? Want to talk about this thing? Sure. I I think this is a very interesting instrument because I used to play. Whoops. Yep. I I used to play uh, one of this guy's mandolins, and um, uh, unfortunately. I hate to say this, I can't remember his name. It's terrible, but it's been so long since I worked with him. No, uh, Robert? No. Uh, uh, oh, damn it. Uh, but anyhow, he's a tremendous luthier, this guy, and he made beautiful mandolins. I bought, I bought a Weber mandolin, a Yellowstone it was called, and I used it. It was the first, first high-end mandolin I ever bought, was ever able to buy. And it was about, was about $2,500, you know, 20 years ago. And I used it on, uh, uh, it was on uh, Now That The Work Is Done. That album, that whole album, all of the mandolin on that album was all that mandolin. And he was a tremendously nice man. And little known to me, really anybody, he, he builds archtop jazz guitars. And uh, this is an incredibly valuable instrument because it's so rare. Uh, there may only be two or three of these on the planet, right? Because they're all built by hand by him alone. And this thing is really freaky. It's a, it's a beautiful guitar. If you were a jazz player... something that I uh, don't really, oh wait a minute now, Bruce Weber. <laughs> it, it doesn't sound right though, I don't, for some reason I'm not thinking that was his name, but anyhow, yeah, this is an amazing instrument, and you, what's your 3600 bucks on it? Yeah, that was around 6500 it's going for around 35 Yeah, like it's, this is, this is easily a six to ten thousand dollar guitar to collectors, mm -hmm. and Glenn has it on for 3600 dollars, and if I was that type of player, um, I'd buy it in a heartbeat, and because uh, it's something really special, and it's so rare, so rare. I don't know. I I just I've never seen one before, and uh, I'm well versed in his mandolins, but this is a beast I did not know existed. So there's that, and uh, what's the what's the new all the news on the recording kings, Len? We got some of those in too. Yeah, sure. I've got some of the 30s in, the Dirty 30s. I've got uh, some of the yellow M's. Uh, I've also got the Triple O 28. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've got probably seven or eight different ones here. Yep. And the D, the, the 18s are in. Yeah, for sure. That's a guitar that I'm actually um, that I'm actually waiting for to review. Um, is that out here? Yeah, there's. Uh, Where'd it go? Uh, right behind there. Oh, is that it? Yep. Okay. This is an interesting guitar. Um, the, uh, you've probably seen me review the, uh, the, the 28s, uh, which I loved, the 328 and the O328, which I really liked. Um, this is their version of an 18, so it's all solid mahogany. Um, it's, they're really nice. 
and I was just playing this one, and uh, it's a nice guitar. What's the price on this? Like yeah, for for eight hundred dollars. It's, it's nice and bright. It's got a lot of personality. And it will and it'll age out nice. And they're and they're built sturdy. So because I've never had one fall apart yet. So yeah, this, it's a really cool guitar. Um, l interesting, just because it's based on that eight, on that 18 premise, that mahogany body, right? But uh, yeah, and you're and with all these Chinese instruments that are under a thousand dollars, you're 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 always able to possibly find a freak, right? That's really really good. And uh, so I say for any company, not just recording thing, but if you're looking for at these budget instruments that are made over there. Um, to these specs, you know, good specs, uh, always go to the store to play them to make sure that's the one you want and that there's no defect and all that stuff because uh, none of these companies have perfect quality control. They do their best they can, but they often can't uh, catch all of the problems. So that one there is really nice. It's set up nice. It's a little, qui a little quiet in the bottom end, but um, I think that would open up after a while. Because it is solid, so. Um, let's, there. What is the range? Cam is a super chat from Kanks Cam. What is the range of a Gibson acoustic? And he says, depends on how far you can throw it. See here. Lower down. Dax, the bass, the wants to know that with the bass. Tuning was when I was playing with Tom Swift, and it's all, it was all just standard. Just that, that's, what, that's my Warwick Alien bass, by the way. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I can't find Jeff wants to know about the Jews harp. Um, would Glenn do a trade for the Jews harp for a fantasy music gift card? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Way to go, Jeff. You know, you're a special class of ours, whole, you know that? <laughs> that's why I love you. Anyhow, he's trying to get us in trouble. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, All right, so we're okay. We're out of questions for right, for right now. Uh, we're getting. Super from, I got it from Tim. Uh, it has not shown up. Okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's Tim. He's in India. Loved your recent show with Symphony Nova Scotia. Did you write the arrangements? I did not, Tim. Uh, they were written by Chris Church and. Uh, um, now I'm not going to be able to call his name because I'm trying to think of it. The oboe player from the from the orchestra is a genius, genius arranger, and uh, he was the other person who did some of the arrangements. Chris Church did, I believe, another morning, and um, most of the uh, most of those five tunes, I think. But uh, the other gentleman did uh, the Lightfoot song and. Yeah, there's a that's a real collaborative. Effort. Symphony Nova Scotia is amazing because they're all, they're not just players. They actually are all composers, arrangers. They can build charts for 80 piece orchestras. Almost all of them are able to do it, and so, it they build their own where they would have possibly an arranger, outside the band to do things. They don't do that. It's all internal. And uh, because they're so talented, and there's some seriously talented writers in there, right? Composers. So, uh, yeah, thanks, Tim. I hope all is well over in India. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, R. Murchie. Murky? Murchie. Murky. Murchie? Uh, is new to our community. Welcome to the insanity of string theory. I'm your host, Rod Serling. Anyhow, uh, what do you personally use to clean your acoustics? Uh, nothing, because I don't clean them. Uh, and I probably sh shouldn't say that too loud, but I don't. I don't clean my guitars, unless they look like crap. Like, if I, if, because in the summertime I'm a heavy sweater. So if I get a guitar that's, get, that's got a big dull patch 
where my arm is sitting, I'll just take a soft cloth and wipe it clean. That's, that's all you have to do. You don't have to use all kinds of tricks and chemicals and bullshit snake oil to clean your guitar. Just take a soft cloth and wipe it down. Uh, it's a living thing, right? So that, you know, there's still all kinds of chemical, biological things happening in the wood and in guitar. So you don't want to get it full of chemicals, right? I, I don't think. And the, as far as the fretboard and stuff, I like to use linseed oil or lemon oil or what do you have? What do you suggest for the? I use the lemon oil. Yeah, lemon oil is fantastic. Just, yeah, you just take a little bit on a cloth and just rub it on the fret, all of the frets and the fret board, and it'll just make the whole fret board pop and it cleans it and it keeps the 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 rosewood rosewood or, or ebony in a fret board is still alive, obviously, and it it takes whatever you put on it in into it and it holds it, and when it needs to be lubricated it it releases some of it right it's and there's some woods like bubinga uh and there's another one that that there's a naturally occur, occurring oil right in the wood and so there's a few there's a few base companies used, that used to build fretboards out of it because the fretboard stayed so slick because it was still oil which is a sap really coming out of the wood so like i mean you just yeah don't use comet or javex or anything Soft, yeah, soft I've cloth, been, and wait. Have you noticed that I've been lysoling all your guitars? I'll take it as a no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, we're getting close to the end here, boys. Uh, is there a guitar that we want to hear or haven't tried that we uh, should? Somebody wanted to hear the Matt Anderson model there. Right. This is a big, big jumbo Lakewood. Now this is a big powerhouse guitar, a little beyond my speed. It does sound like a jumbo. It's really bright in the middle. It has a pretty flat response, right? That's that European thing, right? It sounds a lot better than a Gibson. really really crisp and I think that's why Matt plays them because when he plays lead and does things he wants the guitar to cut and Lakewoods do that really well It's a big sound, eh? But it's got a big point in the middle, and that's the nature of the model. So, if you if you want this guitar for this type of stuff that Matt does, you couldn't get any better because it's just got that super point. When you when you hit it hard, it gets a real hard edge in the middle note of the middle tone, right? Um, it's not a mellow instrument. It's got a lot of power. So, beautiful guitar, and they're and they're heavy. That's one of the reasons. S funnily, strangely enough, right? One of the reasons I stopped playing Lakewood was their weight. They're just a little heavier than most guitars, and I didn't like it. After a while, because I kept they, I kept asking for guitars, and they'd build me, they built me that jumbo, which was incredible. And uh, matter of fact, Glenn and I helped uh, design one of their neck designs, which was the one that had all the maple leaves on the fretboard. They still use that to this day. And uh, their jumbo weight, it just seemed to weigh a ton. It was so heavy, the wood was so old. It was just, it, it was just it was very a big, bulky guitar, right? And, I, and it's just, just that much heavier than I wanted. And uh, so, yeah, but they're, you, I mean, look at Matt. He, he, he takes his guitars on the road all over the world for years, and I've never seen him have to get repairs or have to do any, like if you've never had anything come back, he, and he keeps buying them, so, and I own several over the years too, so, they're great guitars, German, German, German builders. Um, 
Let's see here. Uh, polishing with furnishing spray is a no-no. Yes, Jim, this is correct. Uh, yes. Lysol cleaner. You shouldn't have said that. Now Cam's <laughs> on the run with that. Uh, A. Harvey Robbins. Um, And asked an interesting question about the acoustic, the acoustic treatment used in my studio. So, I, do a yeah, I might have to do, yes, I may actually have to do a, a, an actual video. But, uh, I grew up, excuse me, I grew up working in open concept studios in Nashville, right, and other places, North Carolina and but the Nashville studios were the most interesting because they were literally like, like the size of this store with no walls and no, it was just baffles that they'd put between instruments that were about that high. So you could sit down and play and look over them and see everybody, have eyesight, line of sight all around the room. And uh, so that oh, the concept of having that open thing and then having a ton of wood in the room, uh, you know, gave me all the ideas I've ever had about what I wanted my studio to be like, and, I, and I've always done the same thing. The The two major components of my acoustic treatment in my studio are my sofas. Uh, I learned a long time ago that you put a large leather sofa in a room and it kills the standing bass waves fairly efficiently, so much so that you don't even have to put bass traps in the corners of, sometimes, right? And then if you were to look at the entire room that I'm in, you'll, you would see that that one corner, the, the ceilings are all sloped like this. It's a barn roof, which is another important thing about it. And there's glass only on one side of the room. So, yeah, but they were open. So that's all important, too, that there's glass on one side. Everything else is wood. The ceiling is sloped. It has a, it has a, it has a single angle in it and a low... Uh, you know, support a low standing wall at the ceiling sitting on. And then it has sort of a perfectly square ceiling, which is all sailed in fabric. So, and one corner is dead with foam, and the opposite corner of the room is dead with foam. So it basically kills all the standing waves. So it doesn't matter where you are in that room, you can play an instrument or sing, and you sound the same everywhere in the room. And that's magic. And plus, the room itself is a microphone. There's a pair of stereo AKGs on the walls, about seven feet up the wall, on either side of the room, which turns the room into a giant amplifier. And so you can be close mic'd and have the room on, and it's all just old technology. There's nothing su surprising or smart about what I do. I, it's all just technology that's been around for 75 years. Uh, yeah, you can look at any of the old studios and they all kind of look the same. And there's a little baffling, there's a little wood, there's a little furniture, you know what I mean? And it's just, it's all diffusion. So however you get your diffusion, uh, you get it any way you can and use what works, right? Um, okay, so we're down at the end here. And uh, I have an interesting question tonight. Uh, Gunning and I spent about four hours last night listening to our favorite music. And uh, he played a song that I love and have always loved since it first came out. And so I want you to tell me who sang it and wrote it. The song is called uh, If You're Only Lonely. Whoever tells me that is going to win some various prizes I will describe. So get ready to write this down, Glenn, or somebody. Maybe pass me. I'll, I'll, if you'll pass me, are you able to pass me that? Possibly? Maybe? Oh. Scott McCone is number one. The answer is J.D. Souther, of course. So I'll say it because we're the second winner. Well, there'll be somebody. Yeah. There, <laughs> Je Jeff. Jeff got number two, but Jeff's won before, hasn't he? He won last week. 
John. Let's do John. John Subjack. I'm sorry, I just ruined your name, brother. Sorry. John, you won the second. You won, you're, you're in second. Not second place, but second person to win. Uh, so, so John uh, Sobshak, Sobshak? I don't know. Sobshak? S-O-B-C-Z-A-K. C-Z-A-K. Okay, so Scott McCone, um, we, we're going to give you the, um, uh, the fantasy pet prize because you live right there in Halifax. So I'm going to give you the fantasy prize and you can get a $25 gift certificate from them. And we're going to put you in the draw for that little Yamaha amp that they're sending us. It's a pretty nice amp. Um, uh, it's a Yamaha desktop acoustic amp, their top of the line one. Uh, so you can go down there and get your $25 gift certificate. And uh, there's other sales going on there as well. I know uh, Stephen's always got something going on. And John, you're going to win the G&G &G prize, which is always good. You get a... Uh, have you have we got the have we got the straps in yet? Because they're making them. Yeah, I think I might have one left, but I have more coming. Okay, so you'll get a custom Levy's uh, either string theory or G and G style uh, strap, a set of strings of choice, and a, and a winder. And there's all kinds of you'll have to call Glenn because there's so many deals on these guitars right now that now's the time. Is there anything you want to mention specifically? Well, yeah, I've got the recording king. It's got fifty dollars off all the recording kings until Christmas. Uh, Boucher's, you got the free pickup, of course, and a Boucher strap. And there's lots of other things, places, uh, all kinds of stuff kicking around. I just want to thank everybody for all the support uh, they've given me over the years, and thank JP and Ginger for doing the show here. It's been great, a lot of fun, and thank Santa Claus too. <laughs> so come on down and uh, give me a call, and we can fix you up. Right on. So Scott, uh, you send me. Uh, send me an email right now at jpcormier38 at gmail.com, jpcormier38 at gmail.com, and reference winning the contest for, for tonight, uh, J.D. Seller, and John, S-O-B-C-Z-A-K, I don't know how to pronounce that, that's a really strange one. Uh, John, same thing, send me an email right away to jpcormier38 at gmail.com, and I'll forward your name to Glenn here. And he's going to get you sorted out with whatever you might want. And uh, I'm going to finish off the night because I can with this wicked SG-51 Rosewood OM Boucher that is likely going to melt part of my face, as they usually do. This, how can it be so loud? Talk about the perfect example of why Rosewood sounds so good. This is a this is an example of how dark that sounds. Thank you. Have a great Christmas. Well, we'll see you before Christmas one more time anyway, or twice. But everybody stay safe, stay happy, play guitar, play Boucher's, play Gallagher's, play Yaris, play Yamaha's, play Recording King's, play whatever you can get your hands on. As long as you've got 6 or 12 or 18 strings on it, whatever you can get your hands on, get your ass in gear and play guitar because it's good for the soul. And whoever has the most of them when he dies wins. We'll see you next Wednesday.